डिफिकल्टी Yeah, that somehow he inserted. Okay, na. Next, what happened mm-hmm. is uh, he chosen 24 electrode, 24 mm. Mm-hmm. So that he inserted in 19 mm CDL, 19.5 mm. That passed the 24 electrode passed very freely. Next, he mm-hmm. has chosen 28 electrode, 28 mm. Different, different patients. Ah, different, different patients. Oh. So the, the uh, we uh, decided to read this literature. So the, the yeah. thing is, um, I will call you whenever you are free, so that yeah. you tell your opinion that why she is recorded. See, I tell you one thing, Mumbai. Ah. I tell you the fact there are lots of myths. I tell you no, the no, no, length no, no, of the cochlear duct. Can you tell in your free time or right now? Yeah, right now. This will be recorded and uh, placed in YouTube. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, please. See what happens. Our cochlear duct length is thirty-two to thirty-five millimeters, oh. and it has been uh, like um, it has been reported and it has been proven that our hearing frequency range is in such a tonotopic manner that from the round window region the basal tone. it is destined to um, for the hearing of higher frequencies and the apical is for the lower frequency hmm. so it's like a spectrum along the length of the cochlear duct hmm. so what happens at we human beings hear maximum the uh, the frequency of hearing is 20000 hmm. that is at the most basal part of the uh, cochlear tone hmm. duct hmm. and the apical we hear up to 75 hertz hmm. though it is not very useful in the extreme ranges for our day to day hearing hmm. our day to day hearing is good if we hear from 500 to 8000 hmm. okay hmm. so that uh, the area of the cochlea that uh, that length of the cochlea duct which is responsible for hearing hmm. in the range of 500 to 8000 is the length which is for uh, around 4 mm from the round window hmm. and total 24 mm hmm. okay hmm. what does it mean beyond 24 mm hmm. practically it is not very really useful number 1 hmm. number 2 the initial 4 mm of the basal i mean close to round window hmm. also are not useful hmm. like If we implant, when we implant, mm. if we implant in the initial whatever electrodes in the initial four millimeter of the duct close to the round window, mm. are practically not g- giving any useful hearing to us. Mm. Now there are two different aspects we need to associate with this. Mm. Number one, the spiral ganglion cells, mm. which are in the modulus. Mm. the length of the spiral ganglion is not more than 15 mm mm-hmm. so what happens the basal uh, duct or the basal part of the cochlear duct mm-hmm. the fibers coming to spiral ganglion are you can say radiating fibers mm-hmm. almost horizontal or little oblique mm-hmm. coming to the uh, modulus mm-hmm. as you go up in the middle turn the fibers become more oblique downwards towards the modulus hmm. as you go higher towards the apical hmm. the fibers are right uh, inferiorly direct towards the modulus hmm. now so what does it mean the length of the cochlear duct is 32 to 35 mm hmm. but the length of the spiral ganglion is up to 15 mm mm-hmm. so in order to stimulate the spiral ganglion cells hmm. the entire population we hmm. need not to go all the way to 32 mm mm-hmm. if you go further beyond 24 in that narrow space hmm. 
you are more likely to injure the intracochlear structures like the uh, the osseous spiral lamella hmm. the cochlear duct all these things are more and more prone to get injured if you try to push the electrode in that narrow angle hmm. narrow area hmm. so that gives more and more intracochlear trauma rather than giving a useful hearing mm-hmm. number third aspect we need to understand all these cochlear implant companies or the cochlear implant electrodes we are getting hmm. they stimulate a fixed frequency range from 75 hertz to 11750 hertz hmm. they don't stimulate beyond 11750 hertz hmm. now going from the ravan window from 20000 to 7 11750 hmm. range hmm. that initial 4 to 5 mm of the basal turn hmm. even if you keep the electrodes hmm. is not giving any useful hearing about that frequency hmm. so that is a myth that those electrodes are stimulating and giving us a useful hearing hmm. these commercial electrodes given by the cochlear implant company they do not stimulate a frequency range above 11750 hmm. what my point mm-hmm. now looking at all these three aspects mm. if we calculate mm. right from the uh, basal turn the length of the cochlear duct at 24 mm mm. roughly corresponds to hearing frequency range between 500 to 1000 mm-hmm. if you say 25 or 6 26 mm it corresponds to 500 frequency range Mm. so we are not supposed to stimulate mm. or insert a cochlear uh, electrode beyond that range it mm. is practically not useful rather than uh, giving more trauma mm-hmm. and secondly those electrode reaching over there up to 26 mm. is actually stimulating the entire spinal gang, uh, ganglion cell population mm-hmm. because all those optical uh, uh, cells mm. their spinal ganglion cells project below projector project below in the middle turn oh. towards the middle turn hmm. so if we calculate like uh, from the uh, round window hmm. from the basal turn hmm. up to the the entire um, uh, first cochlear turn hmm. and 3/4 of the second cochlear turn hmm. it is still that length hmm. or spiral ganglion cell uh, ganglion Hmm. Uh, exist mm-hmm. beyond one and three four turn the spiral ganglion cell doesn't go. So the what is your starting point of middle turn exactly at the oval window area? Uh, no, not really. If you calculate the cochlea in terms of degrees, huh. the one full turn is three sixty degree, huh. and beyond that, if you take up to five seventy degree. Hmm. is the spiral ganglion population extends mm-hmm. beyond that all the apical cells neuron extend into the spiral ganglion up to the here not beyond 1 and 3/4 turn mm-hmm. so there is no point in inserting your electrode below uh, uh, beyond that mm-hmm. so what we infer from all these things mm-hmm. we should not practically push our electrode beyond 24 to 26 mm even to, rather 24 is a good choice mm-hmm. to uh, push your electrode up to that length in the cochlea so what is your beyond idea? that uh. yeah okay beyond that beyond that it is more given trauma than a useful hearing okay what about, what is your view about uh, electrode ganglion cell frequency mismatch what what electrode ganglion cell frequency mismatch that is tonotopic of cochlea and the exact <laughs> frequency of the electrode mismatch you see you see this is a hearing uh, traveling web theory ah. that every particular location in the cochlea that is spiral gang, uh, the the organ of porta in that range mm-hmm. in that particular location is responsible for giving hearing of certain frequency hmm now that natural hearing mm. cannot come with a cochlear implant mm. because you have electrodes in bands mm. at certain distances they stimulate that region 
entire region uh, close to that electrode position mm. that region of uh, organ of portal mm. so it cannot give that natural hearing of stimulating individual frequency mm-hmm. so that you cannot match but yes um whatever uh, best possible we can and get is the cost implant is the only answer so mismatch is always there okay and there cannot be uh, the hearing without mismatch with the cochlear implant okay that is not stimulating like individual frequency hmm. yes hmm. it is good. stimulating a group of area a group of cells in that region by that particular electrode hmm. and it there is always overlapping also hmm. so earlier the perimodular electrode concept was brought in by this fact only because they are more specific in stimulating certain group of cells hmm. close to the modulus hmm. but they have their own problem because the electrodes are bigger thicker hmm. Hmm. and that insertion is a very very technically uh, challenging procedure because if you try to withdraw the stylet hmm. before the start of the ascending turn hmm. it is more traumatic it will rupture the um, uh, and it will give more trauma mm-hmm. and secondly the biggest problem is because the cochlear implant is not answer for the entire life mm-hmm. in suppose in the future you need to remove the electrode for reasons like infection there are so many reasons uh, failure hard failure soft failure whatever mm-hmm. if you have inserted earlier a perimodular electrode removal of that is most traumatic mm-hmm. so uh, there is no concrete answer for any single situation Hmm. but the thing is hmm. in the present situation with the available um, uh, uh, weapons what we have hmm. the best answer is to put a mid scala electrode up to 24 mm that gives the minimal trauma okay okay comparative sir. there is not absolute value it is all comparative okay sir thank you sir uh, welcome uh, to uh, uh, um, i will uh, call up roads again huh? okay okay, okay. okay.